Mint Mobile is an inexpensive cell phone service that keeps costs down by foregoing physical stores or salespeople. You may have heard of them or seen one of their clever ads featuring Ryan Reynolds, who also happens to own the company. They're an alternative to some of the more expensive carriers in the US, so I decided to try Mint Mobile for a few months and well, I was very, very impressed, except for one caveat that might make you think twice. Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter by reviewing Mint Mobile. Aside from being less expensive, Mint Mobile has 3, 6, and 12 month plans you purchase up front, right from your phone, without any contracts like the big carriers in the US tend to have. It's a short or long term phone service you can use as needed, set up in about 10 minutes for half the price of the major service providers. So you're probably wondering, how does it work? And what's the catch? How can Mint Mobile charge half of what its competitors are? Well, the answer comes in two parts. The first way Mint Mobile keeps costs down is that it's known as a Mobile Virtual Network Operator or MVNO. That means Mint Mobile does not have its own wireless network infrastructure. In other words, they're not putting up their own cell phone towers and spending money managing, maintaining and growing their network hardware. Instead, what Mint Mobile does as an MVNO is purchase portion of the network services from a larger carrier that does have its own wireless infrastructure. In the case of Mint Mobile, they are an MVNO on T-Mobile's network. Essentially, Mint Mobile purchases bulk access to T-Mobile's network, then creates their own pricing for talk, text, and data plans, which end up being a lot less expensive for you, the consumer. For example, on a yearly plan with unlimited talk, text, and 10 gigabytes of data per month, Mint Mobile charges $20 monthly. Compare that to T-Mobile where their 100 gigabyte plan is $70 a month and requires a one year commitment. Even if you only purchase three months of service from Mint Mobile, it's still half the cost at $35 for 10 gigabytes of data. And yes, T-Mobile does offer quote unquote unlimited data, but that's really 100 gigabytes of high speed data. And it actually comes out to be $840 a year because you have to purchase that plan for one year commitment. Now, there are a few differences that you should be aware of. One big one is that video streaming on Mint Mobile is limited to 480p, whereas on T-Mobile and the other larger carriers, you can usually download and watch your videos in 4K. You also can't stream Netflix from Mint Mobile. Now, with Mint Mobile, you do get international calling to 60 countries, whereas on T-Mobile, it's limited to Mexico and Canada unless you purchase an international plan separately. Finally, Mint Mobile charges per individual and they don't have family plans like T-Mobile where you can get a discount by putting family members on the same plan. Mint Mobile also has an unlimited data plan coming out to $360 a year or $40 a month for a 90-day plan. Now, T-Mobile's own prepaid plans are a little bit closer in price, about $40 a month for 10 gigabytes of data with unlimited talk and text versus Mint Mobile's $35 a month for 10 gigabytes of data unlimited talk and text. But that does mean T-Mobile does end up being a little bit more expensive and it doesn't give you all the features you get with Mint Mobile. And Mint Mobile isn't the only MVNO in the US or the world for that matter. And in America alone, there are over 100 MVNOs like Consumer Cellular or Cricket Wireless, which uses AT&T's wireless infrastructure, Visible, which runs on Verizon, and Metro, which also relies on the T-Mobile network like Mint Mobile. And not to get too far into the weeds of MVNOs, but there are different types like a branded reseller or a full MVNO. Basically, the differences come down to how much the MVNO wants to differentiate itself from its larger carrier, the carrier that it's using for network services. Mint Mobile, for example, has its own branding, staff and ownership, which is completely separate from T-Mobile, whereas Visible is actually owned by Verizon. So now that you know a little bit more about what an MVNO is, you're probably wondering why a larger carrier like T-Mobile or AT&T would allow a competitor on their own network to use their network infrastructure and resell that network service to other customers. It seems a little bit counterintuitive to have another company on your network reselling your services. So what gives? Well, from the perspective of a larger carrier like AT&T or T-Mobile, the MVNO is essentially one big customer. Obviously, T-Mobile has individual paying users, but T-Mobile has to compete with AT&T, Verizon, and others for those users who, after 12 months, can switch carriers, which is why they want you to sign up for a 12 or 24 month contract. Maintaining a national cellular network is expensive, especially in a country as large as the United States, 
And those costs are relatively fixed, whether you have a ton of users, no users, or some users, the cost of maintaining that network and keeping it operational remain fixed no matter how many users are actually on the network. And it is very, very expensive. Just to give you an idea, T-Mobile's 5G network alone costs a billion dollars a year. Since companies like Mint Mobile purchase in bulk a large chunk of network services from providers like T-Mobile, T-Mobile is able to make more money from a single purchase that's more stable over time, which helps them offset the costs of running their network. Mint Mobile benefits because they can resell that service to you and they cut their costs by not having physical stores or a mobile network to maintain. So Mint Mobile is basically available where T-Mobile service is available, although T-Mobile can and does give preference to its own customers. Meaning if you're at a concert or some other crowded place where the network is jammed up, chances are your data speeds on Mint will be slowed down to give more bandwidth to T-Mobile customers. In my use though, coverage in many parts of the United States was good, and I rarely had issues with throttling. And of course, if T-Mobile ever really did feel threatened by an MVNO, they could just pull out the plug from underneath them. So it's basically a symbiotic relationship. T-Mobile gets to pay off a larger chunk of its network services with one customer, Mint Mobile gets to exist and resell that service to its own customers and potentially make a profit by foregoing those physical stores and salespeople, and us, the consumer, get to benefit because there's more competition in the marketplace and we ultimately get lower prices. Okay, so we've established that Mint Mobile doesn't have any physical stores or salespeople, so here's what the setup is like. You can go to their website, check to see if there's Mint Mobile coverage in your area, and then enter the type of phone you're using. Now, if you're paying off a phone with another carrier, you'll still have to keep paying that phone off. But if you've got a phone that's already paid off or you're not bound to a mobile carrier for service, you can still add Mint Mobile if you want to. Additionally, Mint Mobile does have plans where you can purchase a new phone and pay it off monthly with your wireless service. Whichever phone you're using though, if it's compatible, Mint Mobile will show you what the coverage is like in your area. Now, if your phone is eSIM compatible, you can get set up with Mint Mobile right through the device itself. You don't have to have any additional SIM cards. But if you don't have a SIM card, Mint Mobile will mail you out a SIM card you can place into your phone. You can also do all of this through the Mint Mobile app, and it's all very straightforward and takes about 10 to 15 minutes total. Also, if you're going outside the US, Mint Mobile has $5, 10 and $20 international roaming as an add-on when you need it. I've used other MVNOs where the interface was just terrible, the setup was really cumbersome, and it was really just a pain to use. So in comparison to some of those other MVNOs, the process with Mint Mobile is really easy and straightforward, and there's a chat there to help you if you get stuck in any part of the process. 10 minutes later, I had my phone number and service, which now includes 5G where it's available, ready to go. I started the first few months with a four gigabyte plan. Typically when I'm at home, I have my phone in airplane mode since everyone calls me using Signal or FaceTime, and it's rare that I get actual phone calls. Because I rely on Wi-Fi at home, it's very, very rare I get close to the four gigabytes of mobile data. Even when I'm traveling, it's Wi-Fi where possible, and four gigabytes is hard to hit, even for a heavy user like me. But after the first month, then second month of hitting four gigabytes and having to top off my data for an additional $20 for three additional gigabytes, I decided when I renewed my plan at three months, I'd switch to a 10 gigabyte plan, which considering that since August of 2020, I've only used 55 gigabytes of data, cellular data on my phone total, that 10 gigabytes a month should have been more than enough. Wrong. Somehow in January, after about two weeks, I already hit my 10 gigabyte limit, which is really, really baffling to me. According to my phone, that's just not possible, but I tried an experiment where I only used Wi-Fi for February, and sure enough, a week ago, hit my data limit. Which is really strange because, again, according to my phone, over the last 18 months or so, I only average about 3 gigabytes per month of cellular data use. It's weird, and I'm not the only one. It's come up a few times in the Mint Mobile subreddit, and to their credit, they've replied asking for more details. I've also reached out to them, but their response was, you've used all of your 10 gigabytes for the month, which again is really strange because it's only two weeks into the month. They weren't really able to provide me any more information than this. And again, I say it's weird because my phone is almost always in airplane mode when I'm at home. I rarely turn off airplane mode when I'm in one place. I rely on Wi-Fi. And then when I go out and I need cellular service, then I'll turn on the actual network antenna. But otherwise, 
it's an airplane mode. And in February, it was an airplane mode for more than two thirds of its time on. And it's really kind of a shame because other than this issue with the data, I've really been happy with Mint Mobile service. To me, there's no real difference between Mint Mobile service and T-Mobile service or AT&T service. They all kind of work pretty much the same depending if there's service in your area. And it doesn't make sense to pay double the price for an actual phone contract with a larger carrier when you can get the same services for so much less. It's really gotten me to think about MVNOs in a different way. And even if I'm not happy with Mint Mobile, I can always switch to another MVNO and I know I'm gonna get more or less the same network services. In other words, it doesn't make any sense to me to pay for the carrier service. I think the only service really that you get from them that might be worth paying extra for or committing to a 12 or 24 month plan is a lot of people in the United States buy their phone with a payment plan, which means they can pay off their phone monthly. And that's usually bundled in with their cell plan. And again, a lot of MVNOs like Mint Mobile do let you buy a new phone so you can pay that off over time. And it still does end up being less expensive than going with the larger carrier. And when comparing Mint Mobile to an eSIM service like Airlo, which I've covered in the past, Mint Mobile was easier to set up and comes with a local number, not just a data plan. I did though have to use an eSIM when I was in Alaska since Mint Mobile unfortunately doesn't have service there or in a lot of Nebraska. In major cities though, Mint Mobile service was solid and I do like the ease of the interface and the lack of a 12 month contract. Meaning if I can't get this data issue sorted in a month or two, it'll be pretty easy to switch to another MVNO which is another main benefit of the MVNOs aside from the lower price. So you can try Mint Mobile for yourself and see if you have that same data issue. And if you don't like it, it'll be pretty easy to switch to another provider. So that's my review of Mint Mobile, a service that I really, really do like. The ease of the setup was great. The service connection is great. No drop calls. The data speeds were very fast. All that stuff was great, except for this one data issue. And I'm really curious to hear whether or not you've had this, if you use Mint Mobile, if you've had any issues with the data or any other parts of the service in general, let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week and I'll see you in the next video.